Hi, Wizards and Witches. It's Tuesday, and I am exhausted. Yeah, Harry Potter, you got a cooking cave. Harry Potter, be great Professor Snape. Harry Potter, up in the tower, you have your room. Just started flying on a broom. First off, I just want to say thank you to everybody who wished me good luck on my AP exam last week. It was AP Calculus BC, and it was pretty hard, but it went well. I had another AP test today. I took AP Chemistry today, and that went much better than the last one. So, cross my fingers. Speaking of APs, Rachel, good luck on your finals. So, I have some exciting news to share with you guys. At my school, every senior is required to have an internship that they go to on Wednesdays instead of going to classes. Application for these internships starts during our junior year, so I've been pretty busy with that. I'm applying to several editors currently working at the Manhattan office of Scholastic. I have an interview tomorrow, which I'm really excited for, and hopefully it goes well. Moving right along, I was kind of shocked to see the number of people who like the epilogue. So you know what? I'm not going to back down. I am going to make a stand for epilogue lovers everywhere. The epilogue was the perfect end to Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. I think the epilogue gave the reader a great feeling of hope and continuity to the series without seeming obvious or unnecessary. What I felt personally is that the epilogue really showed the true themes of the Harry Potter series. It showed love and friendship and support and family. I disagree with you, Rachel, actually, that the epilogue was unnecessary and predictable. I don't think that I would have known for sure that Neville was teaching herbology at Hogwarts. I mean, you could be pretty sure that Harry ended up with Ginny and Hermione with Ron, but you would have never known how many kids they had or what their names were. Admittedly, the names were a little cheesy. But moving past that, the epilogue did an amazing job of summing up all seven Harry Potter books in one epilogue that we can look back on and remember and be happy with. So Tiana, you asked what houses we were in, and I'm not quite sure how you missed this, but I'm a Ravenclaw. You can tell from the tie I was wearing all last video. Ravenclaw pride. I have a question for you all though. What, if any, do you consider your secondary house? So Rachel mentioned in her last video that she was the only one on this channel who wasn't in a wizard rock band. And before you go telling her she's wrong, she's right. I'm in a wizard rock band. I've just never mentioned it before on this channel. We're called the Luna Love Goods. It's a group that two of my friends and I are in. We don't really have that much music. We have a lot of lyrics, but barely any songs. We're working on that, though. I'll put a link to our MySpace in one of my videos once we actually get some decent music up there. Just so you know, our MySpace is not myspace.com slash the Luna Love Goods. Sunny, I really loved your dancing last week. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> I never knew you could do that before we started this channel. Rachel, you brought up the idea of challenges this week, and I have to say I agree. I think we've all pretty much gotten the hang of it. It's taken me a lot less time to record this vlog than all of my other ones. Why don't we all talk on Facebook and figure out how that's going to work? I have one last question for you guys before I have to go. Recently, I've been really into the show Avatar The Last Airbender, which is a show on Nickelodeon. I wanted to know if A, any of you watched that, and B, if you do, what kind of bender would you be? I think I would be a water bender, and I think I would like that the most, but what would you guys be? Alright, that's it for this week. Tiana, I'll see you tomorrow.